Welcome to Revolution Against Evolution. I'm your host, Doug Sharp. I'm your co-host, Rich Gear, and we're going to continue on with a subject we really started last week, the interesting uh, uh, anomalies that we're finding in supposed millions of year old dinosaur bones that uh, really don't fit the, the dominant paradigm. And uh, this is a little more technical uh, subject that, that we did last year. Now, Doug's going to give you the technical stuff, and I'll see if I can figure it out or, or try to not right. dumb it down because I think your, my audi our audience is, is very good, but it's just that some of the stuff I don't really, uh, I'm not as familiar with some of the terms, but Doug is a chemist guy, and he's, right. he's familiar with a lot more than I am. But it's in the CRSQ quarterly. The Creation Research Society Psych quarterly. quarterly yeah. uh, and it's a special report upon the IDENO project. And it is, um, each article in here has to do with uh, uh, the discovery of uh, di uh, dinosaur tissue uh, that has been preserved in dinosaur bone. Let's talk about, just before we go, what are all the different things that are really, they're exciting, but they're very problematical for long age today people. <clears throat> that they found, I mean, dinosaurs, as we talked about last time, um, has really been the propaganda lizard for the evolutionist, okay? Right. It, it really is not in and of itself a creationist argument or an evolutionist argument, but the evolutionists have stolen it so much so for so many years, it's people just automatically thinking dinosaurs means years old. Dinosaurs, nothing to do with the Bible. Bible and dinosaurs, what does that got to do with anything? Christianity, creation, that's ridiculous, you know? Mm -hmm. Millions of years is dinosaurs, okay? And we're here to tell you that's not the case. And the discoveries they're doing in the iDeno project are very astounding, but but it's not only the iDeno, it is evolutionary scientists who really started some of the, the ball rolling in this. We talked about Schweitzer, right? Or, right, yeah, well, Mary, and, Dr. Mary Schweitzer <coughs> is a person who uh, actually uh, began the, these discoveries. She noticed these uh, structures in, in the bones that she was taking apart, and uh, so she decided to analyze them. and. Um, before this, uh, uh, evolutionists don't, didn't really think to look for uh, you know, for soft tissue in dinosaur bone because, you know, it, uh, it's impossible. Per, 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 they knew in. that soft tissue. Well, here's the thing. We, well, let's go back. We'll just step back just a <coughs> tad here, uh, uh, tad Doug. Basically, I'm trying to get this so that people can understand. We're talking about the types of substances that we're discovering. Uh, we're talking DNA. Proteins, right. uh, proteins, DNA, proteins, uh, osteocytes, osteocytes, cellular which, structures, which is bone, uh, unfossilized uh, animal tissue. Uh, they're finding collagen, right? Right. Scoff flexible tissues. Uh, anything else, Doug, uh, that comes off to mind? These are. Oh, I think there is also some materials that they found uh, with uh, dinosaur eggs. That's right. Yes, yeah, some di some some uh, material that was organic discovered in the eggs, mm. and of course this causes a. After the initial excitement of finding DNA, which everyone assumed, believed, and dogmatically asserted was going to break down in a few mm -hmm. thousand years, um, same thing with hemoglobin, same thing with anything else that, that you, you couldn't even get a million years out of it, let alone tens of millions of years, which you need for yeah, the dinosaurs based really, on uh, paradigm. Uh, are talking a thousand years rather than millions of years at the uh, uh, utmost. So, so after the initial discoveries by Schweitzer and others, and by the way, there's a, would, a lot of backpedaling. There's a lot of backpedaling going on, or and or ad hoc explanations. That is explanations after the fact, <coughs> trying to explain away something that really is an anomaly based on their own their paradigm. In other words, they have to figure out. Uh oh. How can you possibly have organic material in 68 million year old yeah. T. Rexes? That's what, this is what it's called post diction instead of a prediction. Yeah, uh, they're uh, coming up with a, a reason why you're finding it rather than uh, you know saying that this is something that's predicted by the evolutionary theory. Anyway, right. what so, I wanted to do, Rich, was to uh, uh, give you a, a list of the articles that's in this issue. If you get a chance to um, get a copy, you can go to uh, creationresearch.org, um, and uh, these are this is for the members only. So, uh, join the Creation Research Society. I highly recommend it. Uh, here's the articles that are in this uh, issue: is original biomaterials in fossils. 
soft bone material from a bra horn of a triceratops. That's Mark Armitage's uh, research. The bra horn, the, you know, you, triceratops has three horns, the two one, the real famous, got a big frill on the back, and two horns out here and a nose horn. So one of the brow horns, the eye, above the eye, they found uh, bone tissue, right? Is that what it is? That's Osteo right, yeah. Osteocytes, yes. Then, and it, flexible material. Yeah. yeah. Dinosaur tissue or bacterial bio biofilms. Now this is dealing with one of the arguments that um, is in the post-diction. One of the uh, ad hoc, after the fact, trying to explain away what they're seeing. Okay. Today, uh, what we're going to be dealing with is dinosaur peptide preservation and degradation. Okay, when you say peptide, what are we talking about? We are talking about a small protein. Okay, good. Uh, maybe uh, uh, three or more amino acids in, in length, uh, up to maybe uh, 100, I think. Okay. <coughs> That's a peptide. Okay. Um, then uh, then the, there's an article about the Hell Creek Formation, the last gasp of the pre-flood dinosaurs. And that is a geological uh, overview of why they find dinosaurs in, the, in this particular formation. Mm -hmm. Finally, there's an article about radiocarbon in dinosaur and other fossils. By the way, that's another one that's causing an anomaly, Not, uh, apart <coughs> from the soft tissue. We've dealt with the issues of carbon-14 uh, found in the matrix of coal and, uh, and of diamonds. And it seems to be found all over the place. Again, uh, those who are uninitiated, though, many people watching the show kind of know what, what we're mm -hmm. talking about. We say this, Carbon-14 is not useful for millions of years. At best, it could be 100,000 years if you extrapolated it to the nth degree. You could maybe get 100,000 mm -hmm. years if you're totally stretching it. But 65 million years, see, the problem comes in, a million is a thousand thousands. Right. Okay? You might get a hundred thousands, you're, but you're not going to get a thousand thousands. Okay? And then you're not going to get 65 times a thousand thousands. Right. And then some of these are 200 and some thousand thousand. You're just not going to get that. Uh, so carbon 14 is useless in that. So again, the evolutionists like the soft tissue, the DNA, the hemoglobin, never looked for it. Right. Because their prejudice blinded them to real science. They would not even uh, 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 entertain such emotion that such thing could be found. Creationists, though, we, we go after that. But that's why, by the way, Doug, I want to give the evolutionary scientists, Mary Schweitzer and other ones, that are honest enough, even though they're totally an antagonistic to creation, to be true scientists, to let the chips fall where they may right. and say this is real stuff. I, I give kudo and credit to those kinds of scientists who basically say, you know what, this does not fit what we think should have happened, and it doesn't, okay? And um, so I give that, but that aside, the creationists are now taking up the, the slack and they're going, they're, they're yeah. mostly, and they're finding this carbon-14 is ubiquitous, and it's found, you say, in dinosaur bones, in dinosaur, uh, dinosaur uh, uh, tissue, and th things like that. You're finding carbon from right. that. Now, I'm going to give Again, credit a, uh, credit to the, the two people who wrote this article. Uh, they're, uh, uh, they have their doctorates, uh, I believe, in, in chemistry. Uh, John M. DeMassa and Edward Bordreau are, are the two guys who wrote this article. Okay. And uh, he, here's the uh, premise of it is that uh, uh, there's uh, the preservation techniques that the, the evolutionists have proposed why they're finding uh, peptides in, in the dinosaur tissue. Okay. And so they have proposed uh, th three different things. Uh, one is that the t uh, tight molecular packing of uh, uh, collagen fibrils uh, caused that to be preserved. The second one was that sequences enri enriched with hydrophobic amino acid residues cause preservation. What does that mean in a nutshell? Okay, hydrophobic means it doesn't like water. Right. And what it means is it has uh, it's sort of like an oily type of, uh, of uh, structure uh, uh, where you have long chains of, uh, of uh, hydrocarbons uh, that are part of the amino acids. And there are certain uh, other amino acids that are like that. There's hydrophilic uh, uh, amino acids and hydrophobic. So hydrophobic means they like water. They like water, yes. And then hydrophobic means they, they're. So they're saying these tissues are hydrophobic. Right. And, and, and then the, why would that preserve them? Why are they saying that? Well, that's the t the whole thing. Is that uh, they're just saying it, 
but they're not proving it. Okay. Okay. And what's the, and uh, I didn't want to. So uh, and the, what's the third thing then? The third uh, idea is that uh, 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 this is something I'm really not up on, but it's they call it Fenton type reactions arising from trace uh, uh, iron. Uh, it fixes the re the residues, the collagen, for deep time survival. Okay. What they're saying is there's something something in the iron in the iron causes it to be preserved for millions and millions right, of years. Yeah, right. Okay, so and I assume that the creationists are going to be looking into that and the, I got to give the creationists credit, the, one, the scientists that are looking mm -hmm. in there, these are PhD scientists. Right. They're looking at it and saying, is this a reasonable explanation? Right. You know, and they got to say, let's uh, let the chips fall where they will. And, they're, and the gist of it, Doug, is, is did they find, did they answer all three of those objections? In this article, they, they, they pretty not? much have gone through uh, each of these uh, ideas and, um, and debunked, uh, debunked them. Okay. Um, well, let's yeah, take the well, then let's go to argument number one. And okay. That was, that, that was, what was that? Uh, it's a tight molecular packing of a collagen fibril. Uh, uh, could preserve uh, could, uh, could tissues. preserve the t tissues. Okay, so why is that rejected? Well, it's because that uh, uh, the, the flexibility of this uh, 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 causes it to, uh, you know, you really have a, a way of it for it to come apart. You know, you're talking about deep time here. Yeah, again, and, people have to understand what we're talking about. We're talking about millions and millions of years. We're not right. talking about just a few thousand years. I know a lot of times mm -hmm. we use this analogy, Doug. When you get below 20 below zero, mm -hmm. 20 below zero to 80 below zero, it's just stinking cold. But guess what? You're going to freeze a lot faster in 80 below than even dark 20, but you're still going to freeze. The same thing with time. After about 5,000 years, it's like forever ago. People, you, 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 what they're proposing is time so astronomically huge that basically we're nothing but a blip on the end of it. We're nothing. Right. Okay? It is so unimaginably, when they talk about deep time, it's a nice euphemism for saying it's time un unimaginable, really, if you think about it. And so people tend to truncate it down and put it in bite-sized mm -hmm. pieces. They go, oh, dinosaurs lived a long time ago. Well, 5,000 right. years is a long time ago. But 65 mm -hmm. million are quantum leaps of time greater. It's, it's just, and, and so they're saying that the, Fibrous, the, the, the flexibility could not have been preserved for that length of time. Is right, it? right. Why and do they say that? It's because uh, they can uh, visibly uh, see, see, uh, the degradation uh, see the degradation. Okay. And that's the case in all three of these, is that uh, though uh, there is, uh, uh, in these uh, sequences, it, it does uh, give, uh, give some preservation value which is what we see over a thousand years. Yeah, uh, right, it, that's, why, that's why when, you know, we talk about, when you go to a funeral, when they say ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That's right, yeah. But quite frankly, we have mummies that have not been turned into dust, and they're, they're three, four thousand years old, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. They're very old, but they're degrading, and their DNA pattern is degrading that's right. quite a bit, even just a few thousand, in the most, I would call a highly, you know, a hydrophobic, there's no water out in Egypt. That's or, right, I mean, yeah. They got the Nile, but I mean, it's very, very low, low uh, water content in the atmosphere mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. It's, a very, it's an ideal con condition to preserve tissue, to preserve things. And they last a few thousand, and even now, we, you know, you see the, the mummies, they don't look, they don't look, that, they don't look very fresh. Denial you know? is in the Egypt, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, again, we're talking about time so unimaginably long mm -hmm. that the, the, you, you, they're stretching. The, it's like they're trying to figure out how carbon-14 can last for a million years and 65, you know, you can't even get to the last five million years, let alone right. 65 million or 225 million years. And you're finding stuff that, that's going out there. But to find tissue, Doug, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think it's amazing, Doug. You think about the, the movie Jurassic Park, which came out. I know there's a little mm -hmm. segue. And it's an evolutionary thing in one sense. But they, they preserve, you know, DNA found in amber and things like that, you know. Right. But the fact of the matter, it was after that, Doug, that they actually started, I mean, Started really finding stuff. I thought that's, that's right. Kind of interesting, yeah, that is you know? interesting. Uh, the, the the timing that was, and maybe I wonder if Crichton was here. Uh, Schweitzer uh, started her work around 2005. Oh, was it? I, who was? I thought there was somebody in '87 that was doing some stuff. Well, there there were people who who were finding this stuff earlier, but they weren't yeah. actually 
publishing it or reporting they, it. They, they, get, they get laughed off the block, yeah. okay. But Schweitzer, to her credit, was willing to take the risk. Mm -hmm. And what was the one they dug? There was an interview, there was a reviewer that said, that this is again a sidebar, but no matter what data she, or data she produced, would not accept it. Right, yeah, because uh, uh, they just wouldn't be able to survive deep time. They know they couldn't survive deep time. What I'm telling you folks out there is these people are not objective and your prejudice allows you what you can see. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the blinders and open your eyes because there's stuff coming out of here all the time and it's making this <coughs> very bad. Like as I said, Doug, if there was any other explanation besides evolution for an atheist, mm -hmm. they'd take it. Right. And, this, and for you people who are, who are Christians who are subscribing to evolution, you got to think about why you're doing such a thing. It makes no sense, mm -hmm. really. You're still a Christian. I don't have any. I don't have any doubts about that. But I'm saying it just doesn't make any sense to to subscribe to something that is, by its very nature, proposed by people who are antagonistic to your worldview. Mm -hmm. And they are. Most of the polemicists, the argue people for for evolution, all the big ones are all atheists. They're all atheists. You know the big ones. Now let me talk about uh, <laughs> these uh, fast degrading amino acids. Okay. Um, because I, uh, I have worked with some of these. So, ah, this uh, is where the biochemist comes into play. I will defer right. to you. And uh, this was a long time ago, so <laughs> I've been working in the IT world since uh, my biochemistry days. But yep. uh, uh, there was, uh, there's uh, five of them that uh, really are fairly unstable. Uh, in terms of, uh, but they're actually f these. They're finding these amino acids in in the dinosaur tissue. So that speaks of uh, of being uh, uh, relatively young. And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, asparagine is is one. Glutamine, tyrosine, methionine, and histidine. Now, the tyrosine was the one uh, amino acid that I actually done experiments on. And uh, the reason that I found it th that one pr particularly interesting is because it does degrade. Uh, I was uh, doing electric shock uh, yeah, stuff yeah. with it. Yeah, No, you're trying to do life in a test tube. Or life in a test tube, yeah. yeah. And uh, but the tyrosine, I saw it was turning brown and uh, uh, doing all sorts of things. And I, I also found out later, after I was doing the electrical experiments on it, is that it, it uh, just sort of degrades on its own. Right. You don't even really have to... And they're uh, finding uh, this, this amino acid in some of the dinosaur tissue? Yes, they're finding uh, all these amino acids See, in dinosaur so, tissue. So, so back to the other... The, even if we allow some of these factors that would help mm -hmm. preserve a little bit longer, that maybe would give you a few thousand mm -hmm. years, but the deep time that you that they need it cannot happen that's why the one reviewer just could yeah. not accept the evidence Doug I'm saying I, I, I'm willing to accept at least the one idea that there might be there might be preserving factors for a few hundred or even mm -hmm. a few even a few thousand years but for 65 million right unacceptable and that there it is the now, stuff uh, is there the, the two amino acids I worked with uh, were interesting were tryptophan and tyrosine and both of them uh, have ring structures, and which is different than some of the other amino acids. Uh, and it's these ring structures that are unstable, they uh, they will break down in, in ultraviolet light, especially does it. Oh yeah. Uh, now amino acids, acids, these are the building blocks of protein, right? Yes, they uh, are the, what the you know they're sort of like uh, letters in the in a word that makes up a. Um, a sentence, and, the, and it's and a sentence that actually has meaning. And that's the protein. And that's the protein. Okay. Yes, that's good. Okay. And it's the DNA and the proteins that uh, work in tandem together because uh, you need the uh, DNA to code for the proteins, but yet the proteins are needed to uh, fix the DNA. So it's. Uh, there's DNA polymerase, which is a really interesting structure. I <laughs> said, so Doug, long before we get to the chicken or the egg scenario, right. we got the DNA and the protein scenario, which came first. That's right, yeah. The DNA or the protein, because they both have to be there at the same time for this thing to work. And mm -hmm. that's another argument against uh, natural, uh, natural uh, not even selection, but if you will, spontaneous generation or, or how you would have, how do you get this from nothing when you have both these complicated 
structures having to happen yeah, right. occur at the exact same time. The histidine, show, the histidine is, also is an uh, uh, interesting one because it's uh, a little bit of an oddball of, a bro of a amino acids. Well, it's, um, it uh, hooks up a part of the uh, amine area into a ring. And so it's uh, structured a little bit differently than other amino acids. Uh, each amino acid has this uh, um, amine group and then it has the acid group on it. But uh, uh, on histidine, it's linking, linking that up a little bit. So, uh, okay. in, uh, into a ring. So it's uh, structured a little bit differently than others. And uh, this ring structure is uh, fairly uh, delicate. So uh, that, uh, that doesn't hold, uh, right. hold together very long either. And so uh, <laughs> to, to find uh, peptides uh, and uh, isolate them uh, from dinosaur bone and then, uh, and then to uh, find actually these amino acids as part of these peptides. How are they doing that, Doug? It's in the laboratory. They're, they're fine. How do they do that kind of stuff where they, where they can draw the stuff out of the, out of the tissue? And how do they find well, it? Well, uh, you know, there's a, a number of techniques that they use. They um, uh, put it in a, you know, a bath uh, sort of to get it out. Yeah. And, and that's yeah. one thing. And do they spin stuff? Do you see these? CSI well, shows with all this spinning to get DNA stuff. Well, and, you know, you know, that's a centrifuge, yeah. Centrifuge, yeah. Do they, is uh, yeah, that part of it? Or that's, it? that's a one way to isolate the... Uh, so there's several so, ways they do this, right. and, but to get it out there. But there was another thing that was interesting, Doug, is you talked about stuff that was, uh, it would degrade over with certain kinds of spectroscopy, or, or am, I, am I missing this? The, there were ways they, or, they could, or is that the way that they were able to see them? Or that, that these things well, they used. Uh, let me find the note on that. Yeah, I've got uh, a note down here, so I'm trying to figure uh, out. There is, uh, uh, and this was where uh, Schweitzer uh, uh, found the big Mike uh, T-Rex, uh, and it's in the Museum of the Rockies. And she uh, uh, showed that the burial of this uh, uh, creature was rapid enough to uh, forestall damage by scavenging and right. weathering and so uh, she was able to remove this uh, these trabecular tissues and they, they're, <laughs> that's your uh, little uh, cross-linked uh, uh, bone tissue. And she, yeah, there's a couple of, we've, for, for look at this up, just a couple of, couple of types of, uh, your bones are made of, a, of spongy, it's mm -hmm. kind of like a network type of stuff, the lattice work and type of it. Right. I guess then there's the hard ossified kind of, you know, the what we think of about bone is the external part of the bone, and uh, then you have the, the soft, spongier part, mm. and it's found in hips and and uh, different, the long, right. some of the long bones, that kind of stuff. You, this, you, you, when you cut a bone, you can see that, but that's the, that's the trabecular tissue. What are they right. finding in that, Doug? Well, uh, they uh, used uh, several different spectroscopic methods on, right. on that to uh, uh, it showed the uh, presence of uh, Ferrous, uh, uh, no, the ferric ion, which is, uh, uh, it's got three charges on it, uh, three positive charges, and it means that uh, the three electrons are removed from the ring, which uh, causes it to be positively charged. And, uh, and that's a uh, uh, oxidant. It, uh, uh, causes antioxidant. It uh, t causes it to break down other tissues around it. Okay. And so uh, the nuclear magnetic resonance uh, found this as part of it. Now they also use HPLC and uh, uh, emission spectroscopy and Raman spectroscopy to uh, f find some of the same stuff. But, uh, but by and large, it's organic material they're right. finding. Okay. They're finding this organic material, and it's being... You know, when uh, we're talking about dinosaur bones that are not fossilized, or partially fossilized. Let's talk about Mary Schweitzer's uh, first discovery, and okay. that's, uh, it was called the, the B-Rex. And I'm, I don't Rex, remember... Huh? Yeah, Brex, I guess. <laughs> and what she did was she recovered the tissue from the femur, uh, which is a leg bone, 
and she found that it was flexible and it was re resilient and stretchy so you could uh, grab it with a pincher and, and pull it, it would snap back yeah and there were well-preserved amino acid sequences and uh, those amino acids that I mentioned before were uh, found as part of these amino acid sequences and one of the things they tried to say was that uh, uh, it's the adjacent amino acid that preserves the, uh, the unstable oh, ones. contamination? No, it's not no? contamination. It's that uh, uh, the structure of, uh, of, uh, of the peptide uh, uh, connected to, that's connected to a stable one the versus uh, the unstable ones connected to the stable There's no one. stable peptide that would last 68 million years. Right. You know? And what uh, Schweitzer did uh, was she did a study uh, on uh, ostrich bone, I think it was. Okay. And she took uh, materials out of it and then she uh, preserved it in, uh, uh, soaked it in blood in the laboratory and uh, left it that way for two years. And uh, so she, she said that over that two years, it uh, continued to preserve the, uh, the specimen. Okay. Well, you have two years versus 68 million years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I was w willing to say earlier, Doug. I am not <coughs> against some of these arguments to, to, to acknowledge it. Maybe that's why we have some stuff after, mm -hmm. after several thousands of years, a few thousand years, which is amazing in and of itself. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't allow the credibility to be stretched so far that 68 million mm -hmm. years could pass by or, or longer for this stuff to be preserved. I mean, you know, a few thousand, this is like a magnitudes of order longer. This right. is not something where you're talking about 10 years to 100 years, or even 100 years to 1,000 years. You're talking about a 1,000 or even 5,000 years mm -hmm. to 65,000 thousand years. That's just not gonna happen. And th that's why two years, yeah, that, that's a good point you brought up, Doug, I, I like that. Now, so. she also found DNA Wow. And she knew that uh, DNA was there because she used an antibody uh, that uh, only binds to DNA. Wow. And, and so uh, this, uh, and she also ruled out the presence of microbes. And so uh, there was a fluorescent test that was positive for DNA. There was organic residue that uh, was obtained from dinosaur eggshell. That's incredible. And so uh, they found thin, f flexible, fibrous sheets of material. And so all these different things is what uh, Mary Schweitzer found, uh, who uh, really isn't uh, uh, that favorable to a uh, young Earth perspective, no. uh, finding it in, uh, and when one powerful thing is that if you're uh, dead set against something and then you actually find it anyway in a, in a minute, that's sort of powerful evidence that you're I, onto, onto something. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Well, uh, I hope you uh, consider that uh, dinosaurs were young. We'll see you next time on Revolution Against Evolution.